So this is now set at 40 PSI. This is at 100 PSI. Now all I have to do is press the switch that will release the locking forks and hopefully this will launch the bottle. Ready? Three, two, one. Hello everyone, my name is Zach and you're watching Bite Size. Several months ago, I built a mousetrap powered water bottle rocket launcher. The design relied on the spring loaded power of a mousetrap to release a water bottle that was under pressure. Now I got this to work, but it never really worked reliably. So I figured I'd revisit the project. I think the main problem is that the mousetrap just didn't have enough power to release the bottle that was under pressure. So this time around, I'm gonna take a totally different approach and use a pneumatic actuator like this. Pneumatic actuators are pretty simple. It's just a cylinder that's divided in half. When you apply air pressure in one side, it pushes out the plunger and and then when you apply air pressure on the other side, it pulls it back in. This simple device is capable of putting out a lot of force. So my approach this time is if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. My goal is to build the most over-engineered water bottle rocket launcher you've ever seen. I've spent a lot of time here at the computer improving this design and I think I've got something that should work. I think I'm gonna start off by just prototyping this on the bench just to make sure it all works before I go through the whole process of building this thing. All the pieces that I'm going to use for the final build will either be purchased online or machined out of aluminum. But for this bench top prototype, I think I'm just going to 3D print some of these parts. I've got the prototype built up here on the bench, but before I launch it, I wanna walk you through what's going on here. So every soda bottle has a little flange that sticks out here at the neck. The challenge with building a soda bottle rocket launcher like this is to be able to figure out a way to grab onto that flange while the bottle is pressurized to hold onto it. So I designed a pair of these locking forks that will swing together and lock around that flange. In order to translate that linear motion into rotational motion, I'm going to be using a rack and pinion gear system to rotate the locking forks out of the way. I'm gonna connect an air compressor hose up to this connector. This is a two position pneumatic solenoid valve. What that means is that it'll take that incoming air and either direct it to the output of A or the output of B. And it does that by using a solenoid inside here. Now I can control this solenoid by either applying 12 volts or zero volts. 12 volts turns on the solenoid, zero volts turns it off. I've designed a fancy circuit board here that I'll get into a little bit later, but for now all you need to know is that I can control this solenoid valve by clicking this button on and off. I designed this piece to connect to the front of this pneumatic actuator. As soon as I turn on the pneumatic valve, air enters the back half of this pneumatic actuator and it pushes the plunger forward and it opens up that locking mechanism. When I close the pneumatic actuator, the locking forks will lock that flange into place and that bottle won't be able to move up. I'm going to set the air compressor to 100 PSI because I want this pneumatic actuator to be as strong as possible. The air will travel down this path and be regulated to 40 PSI with this regulator and fill up the bottle. Make sense? Now for the moment of truth, I'm going to do the first test run of this new system. The first thing I'm gonna do is connect the air compressor hose to the solenoid valve. So this is now set at 40 PSI. This is at 100 PSI. Now all I have to do is press the switch that will release the locking forks and hopefully this will launch the bottle. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> that is so cool. That was awesome. I went ahead and I ordered some aluminum because I want to be able to machine all of these parts out of a much more durable material. Rather than machining all of the gear parts, I'm going to purchase them out of a plastic material called acetyl. You may have heard of this material by its brand name, Delrin. It's a really cool material that's machinable plastic and it's really tough. I think it'll be perfect for this application. The whole goal of this project is to over-engineer the crap out of it. So I've come down here to the facility where I work, where I have access to these really nice CNC machines.
The next step will be to come up with a way to remotely control this thing. Now since I'm going to be using a pneumatic actuator, I'll be able to use this solenoid valve which I can control electronically. Now I imagine I'm going to have to design some sort of custom PCB. On this PCB I'm going to have some sort of Arduino compatible microcontroller that will use one of its GPIO pins to control a MOSFET which will drive this solenoid valve. This portion of the video is sponsored by Altium. As an electrical engineer, I've used many different design environments to create the schematics and the board layout files needed for the printed circuit boards that I've made. One of those design environments is a software called Altium Designer. Altium Designer is a PCB design environment full of professional features. Every step of the whole process, including schematic capture, net list generation, component placement, board layout, and even three-dimensional viewing is all contained in one design environment. It really does strike a perfect balance between having professional features and being easy to use. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, I would highly recommend checking out Altium Designer. There'll be a free trial link in the description. I want to say a huge thanks to Altium for sponsoring this part of the video. Now it's time to continue to the next part of the project. I went ahead and I designed a circuit board with all these components on it. Then I ordered those circuit boards using JLC PCB. I've been using JLC PCB to order custom circuit boards for many years. I've always been very happy with the quality of boards that I get. When you go on their website and upload your design, they will send you five PCBs for $2. If you're interested in building your own custom PCBs, I would recommend checking out JLC PCB by using the link found in the description. At this point, I'm ready to start soldering all the components onto this PCB. So at this point, I've assembled both circuit boards that will go in the transmitter, which I'll be holding in my hand, and the receiver, which will be on the launch pad itself. As you saw, I wrote some code for the transmitter and the receiver using the Arduino IDE, and I've uploaded that code onto the ATtiny microcontrollers. One of the components that I installed on both of the circuit boards is a little piezo buzzer. I've programmed it so that it beeps at certain parts in the code so I know where it is while it's executing the code. I just plugged everything in for the first time. The buzzer on the receiver works perfectly. As I plug it in, you hear a couple of beeps. However, on the transmitter, when I plug it in, I'm expecting a couple beeps, and I don't hear those. It might be something simple, it might be something complicated, I'm not sure yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and troubleshoot that. The first thing I always do is make sure everything's installed correctly on the PCB and then I use my multimeter to check that everything's getting power properly. Both of those things look correct so I'm going to use my oscilloscope and connect it to the GPIO pin that's supposed to turn on and off the buzzer and I'm going to see if that signal looks correct. I ended up spending quite a bit of time trying to troubleshoot this problem with the oscilloscope. I even swapped out the microcontrollers trying to trace down the problem but it ended up just being a bad piezo buzzer so I swapped that out and solved the problem immediately. 
To communicate between the handheld transmitter and the launch pad, I'll be using a pair of Rayax RYLR896 LoRa radio modules. These awesome little radios can send messages to each other up to 15 kilometers away. If you have a wireless project that is low power and long range, I would recommend checking out these radio modules. I'll have more information about them in the description. Okay, it's time to test this thing. I'm gonna connect the air hose up and turn on the electronics. Okay, good. So now when I flip the launch switch, I've got an extra switch on here that helps me load the bottle on there. I can flip that and these things should shut close. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, that is so violent. I'm excited to see what happens when I actually put a soda bottle on here. That is so cool. Before we move on and launch the rocket, I wanna take a quick second and tell you how you can become a Bite Size supporting member. I've set up a Patreon page as well as a YouTube membership program where you can get cool perks like early release videos, behind the scenes content, and monthly video hangouts. These project videos take a lot of time and money to create and this kind of support goes a really long way. Not only is it a great way for you to help out this channel, it's also a really great way for me to connect with you on a more personal level. I've had some wonderful conversations with our supporting members and I really appreciate those people. If you're interested in helping out Bite Size in this way, you can visit patreon.com forward slash Bite Size or you can click the join button below this video. Now let's go launch this rocket. So launching a soda bottle is fun, but I thought it'd be really cool to design and build my own rocket that I could launch using this system. So I've been wanting to do this project for a really long time. In fact, several years ago, I was walking through the home improvement store and I came across this plastic clear tubing that is used to protect and store uh, fluorescent light bulbs. And I thought it would be really cool to build my own rocket for this project using this material. So this is one of those cases where I love wandering around hardware stores because I always run into new materials or tools or things that I didn't know existed that would potentially be useful for future projects. So I've had this sitting around in my garage for several years now just for this occasion. So I cut a short length of it and I went ahead and I 3D printed a nose cone as well as a base that slides on the bottom. The way this interfaces with the rocket launcher is that it still needs to slide over that half inch PVC. So I went ahead and I cut off just the threaded portion of the soda bottle. Then I modeled the mating threads into the bottom of this rocket base so that this part will thread right in here and it'll be able to slide over that half inch PVC pipe. I'm going to be using some super glue to seal
seal and hold this all together and hopefully it will withstand the 40 psi that I'm going to pressurize this to. If you're new to Bite Size, you may not know that I make a lot of other cool project videos like this. I'll go ahead and post a couple of those here at the end for you to watch. If you like watching these kind of project videos, consider subscribing, and that way you can keep up to date with all the cool projects that I'm working on. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I had a blast with this project. My name is Zach, and I'll see you next time.